Today we're wrapping up hyperkalemia. Hyper meaning high, cal meaning potassium, emia in the blood. So potassium over 5.0 in the blood. Now potassium's main function is to maintain heart and muscle contraction through keeping each muscle cell charged or polarized via this sodium potassium pump. Now potassium is regulated by kidneys, which I call the washing machines of the body, because they filter the blood and get rid of excess substances, and in this case, potassium. Potassium is influenced by aldosterone hormone, I call aldosterone, the security bouncer to the most exclusive nightclub in your body, Club Raz, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system in the kidneys. It's a super funny story. I cover in our full course here at SimpleNursing.com. Main causes that keep high potassium in the body and not in the body. So M stands for medications like ACE inhibitors, drugs that end in pril for a hypertension or high blood pressure patients. Spironolactone is our potassium sparing diuretic that keeps potassium in the body. And NSAIDs like ibuprofen are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs increase potassium or basically keep it in the body. Acidosis causes a disruption in potassium balance mainly because sodium potassium pump, which keeps our acid and base in balance, is being overworked. Cellular destruction like burns or trauma, now when cells burst called lysis, potassium inside that cell explodes into the bloodstream, increasing potassium in the blood. Hypoaldosteronism, usually seen in Addison's disease, causes a low aldosterone hormone resulting in high potassium in the body. Increase of potassium intake, usually from IV solutions or medications, not really caused by diet unless the patient is renally impaired. Brings up our next point, nephrons that are broken, kidney failure patients, also called renally impaired or those on dialysis. Their kidney washing machines are broken, so they can't wash out or excrete that potassium out of the body. Lastly, excretion problems, as mentioned before, mostly dialysis patients. So guys, please remember, renally impaired patients usually have chronically hyperkalemia, or basically high potassium in the body. What's going on in hyperkalemia? Well, high, high potassium, right? And since potassium is the king of action and contraction in your muscles, well then too much potassium, everything in the body is going to be really tight and contracted. So the heart is going to be tight and contracted. You'll see vital signs like irregular heartbeat from all that action and contraction, low blood pressure known as hypotension, low heart rate known as bradycardia. The EKG is going to have ST elevations and peak T waves, which is a big NCLEX tip by the way. The ventricles are basically cramping up. They're tight and contracted. They're not resting. They're not relaxing. They're not repolarizing. They're basically not releasing. Now, V-fib and cardiac standstill can occur with extremely high potassium. So V-fib and cardiac standstill are very serious EKG dysrhythmias. Huge, severe sign. So big NCLEX tip. The respiratory system will be tight and contracted, so a tight diaphragm muscle might lead to respiratory failure. The GI tract will have action and contraction, so increased motility, hyperactive valve sounds, and diarrhea. Basically, the GI tract is squeezing and flexing the poop right out of you because the body is trying to get rid of all that extra potassium. Now, neurologically, in your brain and spinal cords, there'll be too much strain on the brain, tight and contracted. So your patient's going to be confused. Neuromuscularly, tight and contracted, so profound weakness or a general feeling of heaviness, a cramping, increased DTRs, deep tendon reflexes, paralysis in the extremities because the body's just too tight and contracted, tingling, burning and numbness around the hands, feet, and mouth. Now a little NCLEX tip for you. Words like profound and severe are late and serious signs. They indicate a priority patient. So assess these patients first. Okay, now that we know what's wrong, what are we gonna do about it? Nursing interventions for high potassium. Remember our nifty acronym MDKID? Well, the M stands for monitor the EKG. So ST elevations and peak T waves, which is a huge NCLEX tip. D stands for diet, so no salt substitutes, no fruits, no green leafy vegetables, 
all contain high potassium. k exalate helps K exit the body, that's why some call it k exalate. Now this is the brand name and trade name, but for the NCLEX, the generic name is sodium polystyrene sulfonate. A little NCLEX tip for you is that the NCLEX is only using generic names for drugs, so no more brand names or trade names. But caution, you'll have very explosive diarrhea very shortly after administration, so be prepared and have a bedside commode ready. Probably best to give before shift change, huh? Am I right, fellas? Huh? Huh? I is for IV sodium bicarb, which corrects the acidosis. IV calcium gluconate helps decrease that muscular irritability. So remember, calcium gluconate, calcium glues down the muscles to make them less twitchy. Calcium gluconate, get it? Insulin opens up the cells and potassium sneaks inside, causing low potassium in the bloodstream. Albuterol or beta-2 agonists, usually given to asthmatic patients, can also push potassium into the cell, kind of like a forced potassium pump. Lastly, diuretics and dialysis, like furosemide, are loop diuretics, and hydrochlorothiazide, are thiazide diuretics, these are potassium-wasting diuretics. Now, if your patient has broken kidneys and can't pee out all that potassium, then we use the backup kidney, the dialysis machine to wash the blood and get that high potassium out of the body and into the potty. So that wraps up our hyperkalemia, guys. Now for full access to our complete course on electrolytes with over 22 videos with follow-along study guides, go to simplenursing.com, the simplest way to pass nursing school. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.